1969, when the first moon landing took place, not everybody believed it really happened. Some folks didn't trust what they saw on TV. They thought the footage looked cool, but all this might have simply been staged, like a scene on a movie set. Or they thought, how could we really have the technology to send humans all the way to the moon? And even years later, some people are still skeptical about it, even though there's thousands of pieces of evidence to prove that all the lunar landings actually occurred. Some of such non-credible theories even claim that the Apollo landing had happened somewhere in a desert in Arizona or Nevada. Some people thought the United States had pretended to go to the moon to win the space race against other countries. Others were sure the moon landing was a way to distract people from real problems. And in a way, it certainly did do that. Well, there are facts and there are fantasies. So let's take a closer look at this to set the record straight. First, about the photos. Doubters claim that since there was no Earth's light pollution or atmosphere on the moon, we should see thousands of stars in the picture. But this argument didn't take into consideration one crucial thing. The astronauts took the photos during the daytime on the moon. The sun was shining brightly, which made the moon's surface very bright. That's why the starlight was too faint to compete in the pictures. Another argument that doubters decided to raise was that the crosshairs in the photos sometimes appeared to be behind objects, which, in their opinion, suggested they had been painted on. But experiments made back on Earth showed that when an object was brightly lit, it could make the crosshairs appear fainter in the photo. And then, when you copy or scan the images, some of the details end up being lost. This creates the illusion that the crosshairs are behind the object. Yet another claim revolved around the American flag the astronauts had planted on the moon. In some photos, the flag seems to be fluttering in the wind. But hey, we all know there's no wind on the moon because there's no atmosphere. Actually, the flag appears to be fluttering because the horizontal rod at the top of the pole keeps it unfurled. The moon has a weak gravity not strong enough to straighten the flag out completely and create this slight waving effect. Some of the doubtful folks also point to a photo of a moon rock from the Apollo 16 mission that appeared to have the letter C written on it, like a prop in a movie. But after closer analysis of the original photo, they agreed that the C was probably just a piece of hair or thread that ended there during the copying process. Okay, here's one legit argument skeptics also like to bring up. The radiation in space might be too harsh to handle. There's this thing called the Van Allen radiation belts. These belts are like giant donuts around Earth, and they're filled not with creamy goodness, but with solar particles. Some people believe that astronauts couldn't have survived passing through these belts. Yes, being fried by radiation was indeed an important thing to be concerned about before the Apollo missions. The scientists and engineers that worked on the Apollo program wanted to make sure the astronauts would be safe. So they took several measures to protect the astronauts from radiation. For example, they used an aluminum shell to keep the spacecraft safe from radiation. Plus, they had to plan the entire trip from Earth to the Moon really carefully, so that the astronauts spent as little time as possible in the Van Allen belts. And the average radiation these brave astronauts were exposed to was 0.46 rad, which stands for radiation absorbed dose. This might sound like a lot at first. After all, it's around 10 times more than the radiation exposure of medical professionals who regularly work with X ray and radiotherapy machines. But it's well within benign limits. NASA managed to keep the astronauts safe. We have so many records from the Apollo missions, including 8,400 photos, videos, scientific data, and audio recordings of conversations between the astronauts and mission control. They even brought us some souvenirs, about 840 pounds of moon rocks to study. But it doesn't stop there. NASA's spacecraft continues to orbit the moon. It takes incredibly detailed pictures of the lunar surface. It's captured some cool images of the Apollo landing sites and shown us abandoned modules and rovers the astronauts left behind. The resolution is so good that we can even see the footprints they left. Plus, during the Apollo 11 mission, 
the astronauts installed a special instrument on the moon called the Laser Ranging Retro Reflector. Yes, another technical mouthful from NASA. This device helps scientists measure distances by bouncing laser beams off the moon. Now, that would be impossible to do if someone hadn't landed on the moon and deployed the thing. So, some hardened skeptics do believe we sent robots up there. They just don't think there were human astronauts really walking on the moon. They claim that the astronauts pretended to orbit the moon and walk on its surface using special camera tricks. There are also people who believe that humans did go to the moon, but they're also sure that some beings from other planets assisted them. They claim that the astronauts were hypnotized to remove their memories of meeting these unusual creatures from outer space. Well, human imagination has no limits. Neither does foolishness. But keep in mind that with a telescope that's good enough, you can see the Apollo landing site yourself. And if you take a peek at the official photos, you can spot the remnants of the missions. It's important to know all these things, because NASA is planning to send humans back to the moon by 2030. This time, the goal is not just to visit, but to live and work on the moon's surface. NASA has recently launched its powerful Space Launch System rocket, carrying the Orion spacecraft toward the moon. During that trip, there were no crew members. But next time, a cadre of astronauts will make a trip around the moon. If all goes well, we could use the same spacecraft to land humans on the moon's surface, marking the first time since 1972. It's especially exciting because it might include the first female astronaut to set foot on the moon. Now, the plan is to land near the moon's south pole. Scientists believe that in that area, there might be water. Finding water is crucial because people up there could use it to create rocket fuel for future missions to Mars. Imagine using the moon as a refueling station to reach even farther into space. To support mining and scientific activities, we'd have to build permanent human settlements on the moon. So, picture yourself looking through some cool future telescope that catches everything in detail and seeing someone chilling there on the moon waving at you. But we're far from that yet. The moon still doesn't have many things we take for granted on our beautiful planet, such as water. You know, the real one, like oceans, rivers, lakes, rain, breathable air, and ecosystems to support agriculture. It's a barren and challenging environment. There's no atmosphere that could protect us from space radiation. On Earth, we use sunscreen, but on the moon, we'd undoubtedly have to sweat in those big spacesuits all the time. Also, the moon is vulnerable to solar storms. They can make a mess even here on Earth. Imagine what they can do on the moon. Plus, there are extreme changes in temperature there, together with extended periods of darkness followed by intense sunlight. Okay, the moon may sound exotic, but it would be pretty hard to survive there. We need to figure out what to do with oxygen, too. At first, we could transport air from our planet and pump it into sealed structures where people would live. That would be enough for a small population. But if more people started living there with time, we'd need some different methods to get air. For instance, the soil there has about 45% oxygen, which we could extract. I mean, why not? But before that, let's get ready for a day trip to the moon first. 